Hello, my dear YouTuber friends, and I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video. With this one, I'm back on the Series S and using the Velocity one. I'm going to show you, instead of coming down and messing with your mouse with these rotary switches, so the heading and the alt, let's move that mouse out of the way. I've got switches on my Velocity one, as you can see with the heading bug here moving right. Or banking right and then banking left. I've got switches set up and you can do this with any of your chosen flight controllers. So let's move the autopilot assigned altitude up here, up or down. I've just got switches set to them to make my life easier, effectively negating the need to use a mouse. So let's not hesitate. Let's get on with the video. So I'm just set up, usual airport, London City Airport. I do have my mouse still plugged in, but I'm not going to use it to set up the controls. I'm just going to use my gamepad, because I know a lot of people are having trouble, like I said, using the mouse with their Xbox for whatever reason. I'm just going to go to the options menu while I'm here. I'm going to go down to control options, just using the gamepad. I'm using the gamepad to set up all these controls, so if I can do it, then you can. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, because I've got my default, ensure that your Velocity one or your chosen flight controller, a lot of these bindings I'm going to show you will work with other controllers like the Holt S1 or your simple gamepad if you want to bind them up on that. I'm using the Velocity one, lots of buttons available to me. Ensure that's highlighted so that we're changing the correct thing. First thing I'm going to do on the Velocity one is go to power management and throttle. Because I've got two throttles, I've got the GA lever and the top handle throttle. Effectively, it's that top handle throttle there and the GA lever both act as throttle. It can cause problems when you pause and go back to your simulator in a flight. So I'm going to delete that top one, which is the handle throttle. The top one's the handle. Don't need that. I'm not using it. I'm going to clear current input and validate. It's going to ask me to make a new profile because I've changed the default. So I'm just going to call it using my gamepad AP for autopilot. And that'll do. Yep, quite happy with that. And press my Y button on the gamepad to apply and save those changes. That's now applied and saved. I shouldn't have any more throttle problems. Let's get to the autopilot part, shall we? So autopilot, I believe there is an autopilot master set up. It's not on the button I want. I want my B3 button set up as my autopilot master. So I'm going to click in this box here. Go to start scanning. And I'm going to click my B3 button. I didn't select all those. I don't know what's going on. Let's try that again. That's better. Uh, it's set up as auto engine, auto start engine, so I'll have to clear that. But I'm going to go down to validate and press my Y button to apply and save. Going to come search by input here. Or come to search by input. Press my A button on my controller. Press the B3 button on the velocity one. And clear that auto engine start. I don't want that. So A button there. Clear current input. Validate. And apply and save. Now I've already showed this these settings in another video. I just want to make it so that all my autopilot settings are within one video. Including the advanced ones I'm going to show you in a moment. But anyway, my B3 button is now toggle autopilot master only. That's the way I want it. I want a nav button on my velocity one. So I don't have to come down in the cockpit. Let me show you. Oops, let's throttle back on my GA controller. I was messing around with that. Still got the mouse attached. I'm just not using it uh, to set the controls up. But instead of coming down here to press nav, I want a button set up for that. So let's go back to control options. And that's actually called. You have to go to filter all here. So use your right analog stick to change that to all. Go to autopilot. 
And it's actually cold. Let me just check again. Autopilot nav one hold. So keep scrolling down this page till you see autopilot come up as the first word. There we go. Autopilot nav one hold. Just nav one hold. Ignore the top two nav one hold on and off. Just nav one hold. Press your, my A button there on the controller. Start scanning. I'm going to choose my B5 button for that. So B5. That's my nav button, effectively. Validate and apply and save. Nothing else was set up there, so that's fine. While we've got this menu open, I'm going to go down to what... Till I see increase as the first word. Oh, might have to go back up instead. There you go. Increase is the first word. I want to go down to increase autopilot reference altitude. This will mean that I can use buttons instead of coming down in the aircraft to set my autopilot assigned altitude. I'm going to press my A button there in increase autopilot reference altitude. A button on my controller. Start scanning. I'm going to use my hat one switch to the right for this. So click that. Validate. And apply and save. And likewise, we want to go down to the decrease now. So decrease autopilot reference altitude. Press my A button there. Start scanning. Going to use the hat one switch again to the left this time to decrease. That makes sense. Validate. And apply and save. Let's just go back to the simulator to show you what happens here. So, if I press my Autopilot Master, that's my uh, B3 button. You can see now, just using the mouse here to point this out, Autopilot has engaged. If I press my Nav button, I do actually have a course set up. You have to have a course set up for this to show. Uh, if I press my Nav button... You can see now it's gone to GPS, which means nav hold has engaged, or your navigation in the computer has engaged. It will follow the course you've got set up. The only other things I want to sh show you is the reference autopilot increase and decrease, setting an autopilot al altitude for your aircraft. If I move my hat switch to the right, you can see that increases it. Increases it of to of increase increments of 100 and decreases it the same way of increments of 100. It's fine. You can get to 2000, for example, very quick just by holding it down. And if you need to decrease that quickly, you can. So let's set that to 2000. So you can see they're working fine. So let's go on with more settings. Okay, so whilst I've got this big aircraft in front of me ready to take off, this is the danger of playing on live multiplayer, but never mind. A big one that people want to know is this heading knob. Instead of twiddling this to get your heading book, so if you're in heading mode, instead of messing around with that, with the mouse, which can be very fiddly, I want to set that up on one of my keys, on one of my controllers, on my velocity one. So I'm going to go back to control options, so options, get my gamepad cursor back again. Why does it keep disappearing? Very strange. Options. So while that is, first thing we have to set up, make sure that filter is on all, and go to autopilot. First thing we have to set up is the toggle, let's just find where it is now, toggle autopilot heading hold. So when you press that, it will turn your heading hold on or off. So I'm going to click in that box. And for this, I want to use my B7 button on my throttle quadrant on my velocity one. So B7, it's not taken up by anything else, thankfully. Validate and apply and save. Now, for the rotary switch, you would think it's under autopilot. It's not. It's actually under. It took me a while to find this one. Instruments and systems and flight instruments, I believe. So if you click in that menu, then scroll down, we should hopefully see, first letter should be increase, heading bug. Increase heading bug, that's the one. So I'm going to click in there. I'm going to set up my hat to right for this. 
So, I'm going to click and start scanning. Move my hat to switch right. It's already set up as toggle landing gear. I don't want it there. Remember, this comes from the default settings. So, I'll click validate there and apply and save. Click search by input just to clear that landing gear. I'll set that up somewhere else. Move my hat to right and remove the landing gear binding. So click in that box. Clear current input to clear it. Validate. And as it frozen up, it hasn't. And apply and save. So all I've got set up now to my hat to right is increase heading bug. Click out of that. Collapse all these to collapse all the menus. Go back to instruments and systems. Still on filter all. And show you have that instruments and settings, flight instruments, and likewise I want to find decrease heading bug now. Decrease heading bug. Click in there. Press my A button. Start scanning. Move my hat to left now. Let's toggle parking brakes. Wouldn't you know it? <laughs> well, validate. And apply and save. I'm just going to click search by input again. Move my hat to left. Click toggle parking brakes. I'll set that up somewhere else. Clear current input. Validate. And press your Y button. Oh, when it does it. Press your Y button to apply and save it. Now all I've got set up on that hat to is the uh, increase and decrease heading bug. So let's go back. Resume. So watch now. Watch this blue heading bug. So effectively, let me show you first. Press B7 to go into heading mode. You see now it's in heading mode. If I was up in the air, I'll be showing you this later. And I want to control my aircraft with my controller. With my velocity one in this case. I can just move my hat to left and right. And it will increase or decrease my heading bug. So that's perfect. Let's continue there, shall we? Let's just set up to be complete in this video. Uh, control options. Vertical speed. Set up a vertical speed. So that we don't have to come down and mess with anything on that left G1000 then. So we'll go to filter all. Make sure it's on all. And autopilot. And I believe this is autopilot. Let me just check vertical speed hold on. So let's just keep scrolling down till we see autopilot as the first word. There we go. Autopilot vertical speed, hold on. Let me just check that's right. That's right. Click on that button. Start scanning. I'm going to use my B9 for this. My throttle quadrant. It's not taken up by anything else, so that's perfect. Apply and save. And I'll show you this in the sim in a second. And because we set that up now, we want increase and decrease. The decrease are first, or they come up first. Reference vertical speed. Decrease autopilot reference vertical speed. Press my A button there. Start scanning. And I'm going to use my hat switch 2 again down for this. So click your hat to switch down. Yeah, that's set up for flaps. I'm going to move them to my uh, hat switch 1 later. So click validate. And apply and save. And just, actually I'll set up increase vertical speed. Reference vertical speed first. And then press my A button there. Start scanning. And I'm going to use my hat switch 2 up in this case. And that's decrease flaps. Yep. Okay, that's okay. Press validate there. Press your Y button to apply and save. Go to search by input to clear those other bindings. If you want it on that switch. Hat switch 2, that is. Click my hat switch 2 down to get rid of that flap setting. Click in there. Clear current input. Validate. And apply and save. If I'm speeding through this, it's because I showed them in a previous video. And you can always pause it and go back if it's a little bit too fast for you. Trying to be nice and steady. Go into search by input again to clear that other flap setting on my hat switch 2 up. 
So move the hat switch to up and clear that flap settings there. And we can clear current input, validate, and apply and save. Now hopefully that's all gone right. Let's go back to the sim. So resume. So if I click my vertical speed hold on button, should get that blue box come up there. Move the mouse out of the way, we're not going to use it. You move my hat switch up. As you can see, if I was under autopilot control, I wanted to climb at a specific uh, feet per minute. So, say, 700 feet per minute. Or I want to descend under autopilot control at a specific rate. So, minus 500 feet per minute. As you can see, that all works fine. And when it gets there, that blue box will disappear. So, that's all well and good. The only other ones that I want to show you is the heading bug. As you can see... Well, I've showed you that. That all works fine. So we've got that all set up. What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to go through. And I've linked the video before where I showed this. All my settings on my Velocity 1. I'm just going to mess around with a couple of these settings. Set my flaps up to my hat 1. Set up my parking brake and reset cockpit view. That's all I need to do. And then we'll go for a test flight. Okay, so test flight. I'm set back up at London City Airport. I think the best way for me to show you this is to actually record my footage. A big aircraft is just about to come into view there, never mind. So there you go, there's my Velocity 1 setup on this wonderful desk. Link in the top right for this wonderful desk. Got both monitors, well, monitor and TV, crappy TV, but still it's set up. PC and Xbox setup. It's wonderful for this kind of thing, this desk. Plenty of room. So what I'm going to do first, come down to my instrument views using my left POV switch. And I'm going to use, there we go, go back to this view. I'm going to use this hat switch right, hat switch one right, to increase the autopilot assigned altitude. The blue box, you can see the numbers move in there. Let's increase that to 1,300 feet. So when I click autopilot, that's the altitude I want to climb to. Go back to my cockpit view, throttle up, release the parking brake. And I'm doing this one-handed, but it should be okay. I'll get up to altitude. Let's just put a bit of rudder to the left there and right just to say center. Get up to speed as normal. Take off and just hold my yoke back for a bit in this case because I'm going to have to release the yoke to get hold of my trim wheel. That will do. Just make sure I'm in positive rate of climb. Click my autopilot toggle on. And I'll go to nav first. So click my nav button. And as you can see now, the autopilot's following the simple course I set up. Say I want to climb at a higher rate. I can click my vertical speed button. And which one was it now? Vertical speed up and down. Hat switch to up and down. I can click that to increase my rate of climb. Or come down. Let's put it at a more reasonable rate of climb to 700 feet per minute as you can see that all works while we're in that mode let's go to heading mode now you can see the blue bug is currently pointing towards the north by default so if i click heading we're now in heading mode the autopilot's going to swing back around to the north let's go back to our normal cockpit view and i can use my hat switch to left or right to move that heading bug so I can move in under heading mode. I can go left or right. So there you go. That's all the autopilot buttons I've set up. You can go wild and set up more if you want to. The Velocity one especially has lots of buttons. If you want to do this on the hold task one, you can. You can actually hold a button and use your hat switch on the hold task one. Uh, to set up these, some of these autopilot controls, rotary knobs that I just showed you. Or in place of the rotary knobs. I may do a video of, of that in the future. Let's just stop recording. But listen, I'm going to leave it there, chaps. Those are the more advanced autopilot settings that you can set up with your Velocity 1 or other flight controllers if you wish to do so. Let me know your thoughts on the video. Give it a like if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more, obviously, many more flight simulator videos on their way. Oops, photogrammetry warning. Can we just ignore that? We can't. 
Good timing. <laughs> and I'll see you soon.